In this video, I'm going to try and cover off the process I took to make this short forest scene. This is only my second voiced video, and as a game dev beginner, I make no allusions to knowing what I'm doing, so apologies in advance. Depending on whether there's interest, I may make some more videos explaining how I made my other short clips, but for now, on with the show. I often find new ideas annoyingly hard to come by when you're looking for them, but surprisingly forthcoming when you're not. As such, most of my short clips stem from me playing with one particular tool or technique I found in my efforts to learn more about Godot, only to balloon into a mini-project as I keep poking at it. This piece started the same way when I found this Breath of the Wild style grass asset, which immediately captivated me, but was a little… small. My first poke was to see about how I could scale up the grass generation to allow a player to freely move around a world but have dense grass in all directions. Godot's multi-meshes seemed the obvious choice for performance, but batching the entire map into a single multi-mesh was out of the question, and would need to be tiled to ensure that frustrum culling could occur. My initial attempts had some interesting side effects, but eventually I got there. Once able to generate tiles of grass around the player, with variable levels of density, I started looking at filling the rest of the scene to make it more interesting. Some basic terrain modeling in Blender would serve as the landscape rendering out to a height map so I could sample it to set each blade of grass's height position. I also modified the grass density by the slope angle, but this is still a little buggy. I then added some trees, and as I was struck by how barren each slope looked, some rocks. I knew the clip would only be 30 seconds or so, so I wasn't too fussed about filling out the rest of the map, and felt like this looked believable for this small area. But the scene was still bare. I wanted the grass to be the main focus, but the complete lack of ground foliage was jarring, so I added a few bushes and flowers. Ah, there we go. Now on to the most time-consuming part, lighting and colour. Out of the box, Godot's default procedural skybox is, shall we say, less than ideal, giving everything a dull and blue overcast look. Luckily it is easy to change, and my preference is to find a decent HDRI to use as a panorama sky. However, I wanted to have a more stylized look if the camera ever got a long shot. So I made sure to throw some GIMP filters at the image first before I was happy with it. That's a bit warmer, but maybe the filters were a waste of time. Onto the other environment settings, I find fog adds depth and scale to a scene, but again, the default color is this odd muddy grey blue, and I decided by now I wanted the scene to be close to sunset. So first off I set the fog colour to the sun colour, then I just drag the colour around to a spot I feel is believable, making sure to tinker with the opacity. Let's quickly turn the fog off and on again to make sure the changes look better. Yep, I'm happy with that. So now I'm tinkering with the depth and height to find the sweet spot of what pleases my eyes most. I don't think there's much science to this really, but if you have concept art or other game styles you like, comparing to screenshots can really help. Now we check again if the changes still work. Bosh! Already the fog gives the illusion of volumetrics. Generally I find auto exposure annoying, and screen space reflections aren't going to do much with this max roughness outdoor scene, but screen space ambient occlusion can really add to the realism of shadows and lighting in a scene, and I can't be bothered to bake anything, so doing it real time helps. I don't really have any advice here, everything I do is trial and error, trying to find the sweet spot of each change and what I find visually pleasing. I don't have concept art for this particular piece, so how I want the scene to look is evolving as I play. Onto depth of field, which I found out while learning Blender is a great tool to direct the viewer's eye to a particular object or range. However, it can be an overpowering effect, so I would recommend keeping the amounts low, if you don't want to inadvertently draw attention to the blur effect itself. Near blur isn't really necessary in this first person scene, but can be a great asset to have in first person setups. Next we have God Rays. These don't come native in Godot, but are available on the Asset Store as a free add-on, providing an easy to use screen space effect. They do sometimes behave oddly when the camera is at certain angles, but for the most part I love the effect, even if they are a big hit to performance. For the sun I just added an orb and ensured the directional light would line up with its origin, then added a mission, which allows the glow setting to really create some pleasing effects. Change the blend mode to additive, then back to trial and error with the settings till you find the point that looks good. I don't entirely know how intensity and strength work as they seem to do the same thing, but I'm happy with these settings for now. Finally tick both bottom options for extra quality, and now we have a semi-believable blurry sun with satisfying god rays. The adjustments box shouldn't be overlooked, as I find the default contrast generally a bit bland and usually crank it up a touch. 
Similarly, a bit of extra saturation would make these afternoon colours really pop. Now you can play with the tone map if you like, and probably should have done this first, but I find sticking to linear usually fine if you're spending time in all of the other settings. I might just tweak the exposure a touch. Oddly, now I'm happy with everything except the grass, which looks unbelievably similar. The human brain is annoyingly good at spotting similarities and patterns, so it's important to try and break them up whenever possible to avoid that fake look. The grass asset came with some great settings to toggle. The ability to make the base of each blade darker than the top is especially important, making it blend with the terrain better. But I added a further blend that modifies the blade's colour based on a texture. Procedural noise generally looked kind of jank, but oddly some random texture I used for the terrain looked quite pleasing here. The last thing to mention is something I recorded out of order, but to make sure my scenes look alive I always try to add a small amount of ambient movement. The leaves of the trees, flowers, blades of grass and bushes all move, but this can easily be overdone, so I tend to keep this effect minimal. Really, I should have added moths. Moths add realism to anything, but for this piece I decided I was done. Anyway, thank you for watching and please like and subscribe, or don't, but I look forward to your feedback in the comments if you'd be interested in more breakdowns like this one. Thanks.